important to realize, however, is that Kenwood, with its planetary action, was originally designed by a Mr. Kenneth Wood, now 64, but still very much alive and well, and living in Liphook near Petersfield. Industrial design is, alas, something which most of us take for granted, unless, that is, it doesn't work, whereupon we complain bitterly. But if you take just a tiny aspect of industrial design, such as all those kitchen appliances without which our lives would be hell, a few years ago, none of them existed. There is no excuse, when you think about it, for a teapot, which not only does not work properly, that is, without dripping or having a handle that is awkward or too hot to hold, but which does not also look beautiful. Likewise, a car or a factory or a lamppost. Too often, it seems to us, these everyday artefacts are designed without any thought or skill. As long as they do their job and are as cheap as possible to manufacture, that's often all that matters. Well, it isn't. Ugliness breeds ugliness. And if you look at these pictures taken at random of various bits of industrial or urban designers' tat, you can see just how quickly we are ruining our landscape. So we thought we'd take a look at the life and work of one of this country's most famous inventors and designers, Kenneth Wood. Well, I don't think anyone's going to go backwards. I can't see anyone going backwards to use a, a wooden spoon again. We might have to um, if we run out of oil and run out of electricity. But uh, as far as I see the domestic appliance business, it's, it's a tough business, but you've got to produce the right product. I went off to Merchant when I was 14. My father died and I couldn't go to any university. I wasn't very good anyhow. I remember we had a, a mistress teaching French and um, she wasn't very good, so I used to hop out the window during French lessons, buy some Wall's ice creams for a penny a time, jump back and sell them at a penny halfpenny a time during the war. I was very much involved in designing mainly assimilators, both for rear gunners and um, for radar. I think the end of the war it was a great opportunity for a lot of us to get started. It was a period when Things were on ration, steel was on ration. And so that uh, towards the end of the war, I had a feeling that automation, which I couldn't afford to do in a factory, would in fact start in the kitchen. People in this country called me a little crazy when I thought of the idea of not just a toast that was a uh, natural, but certainly going into the mixer regime. The first one was a copy of a famous American one. You know, I looked at it and I drew it. I had to make it a bit bigger. All that we did was to get all the best bits that we possibly could from everybody else, try and improve those bits, and then put them all together. Uh, there was nobody that had the planetary action, that they hadn't followed anything that the industrial boys had done for years. I suppose people thought, I think wrongly, that uh, this couldn't be really designed down to a domestic unit. Now, let's face it, the bakers who made cakes, bread, and all the things that somebody wants to make in the house, if one possibly can, if it could be adapted to a domestic appliance, then I rather felt we might be one step ahead of the market. The chef was thought of, designed, and tooled, and went into production in less than two years. When you talk about mass production, you, you've got to be right. But there's a saying in that, you can have any colour you like as long as it's white. The shape was really dictated by what it had to do. We had to have a bowl there, a mixing, a mixing head here, power outlet there, and a gearbox, or gearbox in those days, it was along there and the motor this way. Um, we had to wrap some clothes around it. I was chosen from a group of three designers and got the job to design for Kenneth Wood his second generation of machine. Uh, and that photograph will show you um, the machine that he was making before I came into the action, uh, the one that we designed, and that's 20 years ago now, um, and one that was designed much more recently and which is the current production. Now, the interesting thing, uh, two or three things, of course, uh, I could talk about, but the one particular thing I'd talk about on this model, which is the 20-year-old thing, is that, let me try and illustrate the point. If 
uh, we'd arrived at a fairly simplistic outline for the thing, which then has a curve here, and in there sits the bowl, okay? Now, this is just an example of how a, a, a little discovery can really change the personality of a product. If you see that as the, sort of the outline, what I discovered was that we'd got to make a break in the product at that point, and by changing the color there, what we'd succeeded in doing was actually making this lift up, visually lift up, and so the whole thing had a grace, which then became, and back to my second point, had a grace which gave the thing a personality, and so strong was the personality we created there, that when we came to design this one many years later, um, we were, we were really, in a way, quite inhibited from making the large step we'd made between that one and that one, because this design had become so archetypal, it had become the cartoonist drawing of a kitchen mixer, that you can see how similar these two are compared to those two. I used to go into the office very early in the morning, in case I had a bit of plasticine. I, to, I made a plasticine model of what I thought was right, picked other people's brains, and we produced the first, first chef. But after that, when we started designing the second one, I was fortunate enough to meet Ken Grange. We started with very well understood, well established engineering skeleton, we shall call it. And my job was to present that in a product so that when the public went to the shop, they really enjoyed the product. They really wanted it and they could understand how to use it and they could also appreciate once they'd got it in their hands that all the parts had been put there so they were comfortable to use, that they were easy to use and they were a pleasure to use. And in order to do that, we arrive at it by a process of of model making, incorporating ideas that we work through, through drawings and sketches, and gradually honing in on a very well detailed model of what we intend the product to be. I'm old enough to remember when the first ballpoint pens, for example, were actually on sale. A man came into the office one day with this huge pen, uh, and it was an absolute sensation. And he paid, I would guess, converting the, 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 for the time and so on. I guess he must have paid about 45 pounds for that pen. Um, and it was a sensation. And all that's happened over these years is they've improved and they've got steadily and steadily and steadily cheaper. And that seems to me to be a, a real product in defense of mass production. <laughs> industrial designer's job is complicated, but if I try and put it into, into a nutshell, it is to take the function of the product, and often that will be starting with basic engineering elements, a motor, a gearbox, whatever it is, and he will try to arrange those in a, in a form that then when he puts his, puts his cover on it, um, is, is a, an eminently usable and attractive to use, and a, and a, very, and a very attractive product to see. We had the same story to show right the way through from a, a presentation point of view. Uh, the old saying of I appeal is by appeal has always, uh, to my mind, been very important. don't think we're artists, although I think that's slightly nonsensical because the truth of the matter is we're, we have to be creative, we have to be inventive, and at the end of the day we have to be artistic insofar that the product we produce should be beautiful. Well, I suppose we're all producing a lot of things that we don't necessarily need. I mean, you don't necessarily need. Um, 
uh, a food mixer that's got a can open on the top. Um, it's one of those things, we, we don't need a lot of things that we have. This is sort of modern, uh, the modern way of life. The work of Kenneth Wood and his chief designer, Kenneth Grange. Ken Wood, one of the very few industrial designers who is now... <laughs>